Hi everybody, Damien here, back for another bit of wild camping. This time with Keela Forest, Northumberland. It's 8 o'clock and uh, it's starting to rain, so I can't keep the camera running too long, otherwise it's going to shut down. I'm following this track, which takes up to the observatory in Sky Space, whatever that is, but I shall find out. Uh, I'm on my own and Basically, I've got a couple hours before it starts getting dark. One thing I didn't anticipate was the midges. I think I'm about half a mile from the reservoir and I shouldn't be getting bit like this. But it's so moist and muggy. Yeah, they must be everywhere. It's such a shine on. I'm going to get hammered tonight, like, by the midges, that is. I haven't bought any drink, by the way. Well, that's all killers. Never mind. Listen. Nothing. That's probably just me here. Just me for miles. Or maybe it's Bigfoot or the Cheviot Yeti. If there is such a beast. He's <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's the observatory. I won't be going up there. What a horrible night. Beautiful views, but everything's so wet. Sun setting over there. Well, it will do in a couple hours or so. I'm going to the sky space, have a look there. And I'm going to find somewhere to pitch me top. Looks like it's starting to ease off a touch. Look at as I'm soaking. Anybody ever call me a fair weathered wild camper again? Because I'm knackers. Nearly there. Over there yet? So where the hell is it? Sky space, it said 250 yards. Yards. Hope it's worth it because I'm not at. I might even keep inside if it's uh, nice enough. Ooh. I think it's like a. Uh, obviously, it's a circular building, but it's got a hole in the top, and it's it's like an observatory. You can look out the look out the top of it at night time or whatever. Or you can hear, I don't know if it's because of the way it's made, you can hear eerie sounds or echoes or the wind or whatever else, but... Interesting. A nice wild camping spot perhaps? Perhaps not. Looks like planet Earth. Looks like planet Earth floating in space. That's my first impressions. View back out. It's interesting. Planet Earth, seen from sky space. Well, that's what it looks like through the viewfinder. What do you YouTubers think? 
It's eerily silent. Squeal like a pig, boy! Squeal like a pig, boy! Enough of that, I will freak myself out. Hey, you keep in here, you know. Well, let's get out of here. Find somewhere to keep. Guys, beautiful. I love it when it's so changeable like this. We'll have a look up here. We'll see what's across the way. Beautiful Northumberland. Kielder Forest. Fantastic. What more can I say? Wayne Wright said, you know, why do men climb mountains? It's a question each man should ask himself. And I tell you what, with views like that, that's your answer. Fantastic. Kila Reservoir. I think it's the biggest man-made reservoir in Europe. Well, it's getting on. But I find somewhere to pitch up. Telescope. Point is going up there, there's nothing to see. Unless it gets dark. And then everybody starts coming up. Somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere over both rainbows. Wow, what a sight, beautiful. I wonder if that's lucky or not. Like four leaf clover, it's lucky if you pick one of those. Maybe it's two rainbows is lucky. I see the nice little spot halfway up clearing in the trees. It looked quite fat, so I'll head for that. I was going to light a small fire and have a cup of tea or whatever, a um, cup of soup. I've got noodles, but wood's that wet. I'm not even about to waste my time. And plus, I think the Forestry Commission has got a policy, uh, no fires, so yeah, it's not worth the risk. Them clouds rolling over the hill. Each valley has its own microclimate. Fantastic. Had a barbecue earlier in the Kila village as a campsite. That's where Wallace is kipping with the kids. So it's about a two mile walk from there to here. So I've had a big meal. I don't really need to cook anything. Get the brew on would have been a good idea. I mean, I've, I could have brought a little hex stove or I've got one or two other options I could have used. I've got a Coleman, like, I don't know what model it is. It's like a petrol pump you up stove. Nice little, uh, nice little stove like, but uh, minimalistic. That's my, that's my middle name. Still no sign of the Cheviot Yeti. Although I've bumped into a few uh, mountain bikers, posh wild campers.
this spot would be ideal. There's two trees there, quite close together. Ground's nice and flat. Well, slopey, but the only thing is, it's a bit of a trail coming through here. Trail markers. So, if it gets too dark, I'll, this'll be me. Second choice, I'll have a little look down here. I can hear water, like so. Although I've brought plenty of water, I've got a couple of litres. Enough for the night. Oh, it's so quiet. That wind's dropped as well. The problem is, these woods are crisscrossed with tracks, mainly mountain biking. Walkers take priority. I mean, the last thing I want. I mean, the, the nice flat areas are the bits where the people and the bikes are coming through. The last thing I want is um, wake up in the morning with a bike on top of us. Well, I'm back where I was before. My first location where that trail marker is. There's an obvious trail coming through here. Walkers and mountain bikers, but just off it, there's two trees fairly close together. It seems reasonably flat. I mean, it's slightly going downhill, but here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a slight incline where that would do as a pillow of that, a natural pillow. Very soft, but it's basically pine needles and leaf matter or leaf mould, whatever. I think I'll uh, stop here. It's one thing I don't like about Kila. The midges, they're everywhere. What time is it? Quarter past nine. Oh, I'm getting bit. I had to come away because there was that many midges and what I noticed was a little a small pond and I think they must have been coming from there or breeding in the water or whatever and I've come further up the woods here to where the opening where I come in has a bit of a breeze and that seems to be keeping them away. There's two trees here and the ground's a little bit it's not as nice as where I was but it's soft moss, sphagnum moss. I'm running under light. What time is it? Half past nine. I'll get cracking. Morning campers, it's 11 o'clock and I slept in. This is a view, I haven't got out of bed yet. Well, I'll give you a quick scan. It was too late to film last night, it was too dark I should say. It rained a little bit and that breeze sort of kept the midges away a little bit but when the wind dropped they were totally biting us so I had to close me, me bivvy right up, so just so there was a tiny little uh, air hole, and that seemed to keep them away, mostly anyway. The old one was getting in, still biting us. But, nice woodland view. Kept hearing the owl tooting last night. Heard like a shriek, but I don't know if that was a fox. Last night, where I wanted to set me basher, I got started, and the midges were just totally biting us. I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it. It was just irritating us that much. And I noticed it was a small, like, small pond or big flooded puddle or whatever, because it was raining heavy last night. And I don't know if they were 
it was a little bit swampy there or whatever and there, there was, maybe that's why there was too many of them but it was in a bit of a hollow and it wasn't as windy and, and I think um, that's why I was getting bit but as I moved further up the wood towards the opening where I first come in, come in where it was a little bit more of a breeze and, uh, and they weren't there you know so I thought it wasn't as nice as the location I first seen it was off the, the beaten track a little bit uh, here I, I can be seen I'm about 200 yards away from the opening where the path is so I can be seen um, but uh, it was a little bit less the, the midges were biting us a lot less so I picked this location and I have to say it's one of the most comfortable places I've slept in a long time the ground was totally soft it's all mossy and has a slight incline here which served as a makeshift pillow quick look on the outside Pants dry in there. Swim out a little bit. To be honest, I didn't really need to put the tarp up. I mean, I could have just slept in the bivvy, but I didn't fancy the heavens opening up like they did yesterday because it's been very thundery the last couple of days. Yeah, it's, it's no fun, like, when it's really chucking it down. Another scan of the woods, 360. I mean, that's when I, where I came in from up there. One thing I will have to say is, it was too dark really to set up. Um, you should give yourself at least a couple of hours to find somewhere and set up. I mean, I, I, I do want me on 10 pegs and knots and everything. And it's such a slab in the dark. I can't remember what knot's called, it's like a slip knot for the guy lane. I've got like the bow lane. Not there. Can't really see it very good. The ridge lane, tire, Siberian hitch first. If you can see that. Quick release loop. Just pulling that comes out. And there, the Prusik knot. Or keeping the the bash are nice and they stop from slipping. And the other knot, I can't remember what that one's called actually. Is it just a tarp hitch or something? I mean, as there's, uh, there's plenty of uh, online sort of um, examples of how to do it. Just got to Google uh, tarp knots, and there's any amount of videos pointless me doing a video on knots. I don't know what some we most of them are called to be honest with you. I know a handful of knots and that suits me, it does most of my needs. Have a quick look. I'll have to head off soon because uh, I've told the wife I'll be back for 11, it's half 11 now, and uh, she may she'll probably be worrying about us. But on the whole, a very enjoyable experience. Wasn't even cold last night, and I can't wait for the next one. Wild camping is becoming more and more popular in this country now, so to protect the future of wild camping, leave no trace. It's that simple. Right, I'm off. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.